Um, welcome to today's edition of Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. Hope you're having a great start to your day or had a wonderful day. A very warm welcome to all of you. Today we will continue on our journey of the topic of discussion of God, right? We are picking up the different aspects of God, starting with the very definition of God as our scriptures explain us. Uh, then we, we have posed a question around the formless and form, right? I've been posing that question and today we are going to take that topic um, in as much detail as possible. And then um, there will be at least two to three more sessions before we can wrap up the topic of our discussion uh, that we're going to have. So let's get started. Again, a very warm welcome to all of you. Give me a sec. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. And we will get started by invoking the blessings of God and Guru like we always do. All right. You're able to see my screen? Gee, perfect. Yeah. Okay, let's get started then. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu. Guru Devo Maheshwar Ha Guru Sakshat Para Brahma Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanur Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru All right. So Radha Radha, good morning, good evening to all of you once again. Okay, so let's get started with our engaging discussion that we're going to have on this fascinating topic. So I have picked up the shloka. Now, this is what we are going to discuss today. Uh, I picked up the shloka 14.27. So again, we go back and forth based on the topic that we have chosen. And as part of that, I've picked up this 14.27 today. Although when we get back on track, we'll start with chapter 4. I know it has been a while, but we'll get back on chapter 4 very soon. Um, but let's get started with this shloka, which will help us continue with the discussion that we are having. Brahmano hi pratishtaham Amritasya vyayasya cha Shashvatasya cha dharmasya Sukhasya kanti kasya cha All right, I see a few hands. You're welcome to follow along. Meena ji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, everyone. Brahmano hi pratishtaham Mritasya vyavasya cha Shashvatasya cha dharmasya sukha Sukha siya ikanti kasya cha Thank you, Mirji. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, Sam. Radhe Radhe. Brahmano hi pratishtaham Amrutasya avyayasya cha Shashvatasya cha dharmasya Sukhasya ikantikasya cha Radhe Radhe My God, this is powerful. Ashitoji, Radhe 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 Brahmano hi pratishtaham Vritasya avyayasya cha Shaswatasya cha dharmasya Sukhasya ikanti kasya cha Very nice, thank you. Sandhya, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Sandhya, welcome Sandhya. Brahmano hi pratishtaham Amritasya vyayasya cha Shaswatasya cha dharmasya Sukhasya ikanti kasya cha Very nice, thank you. Jitinji, Radhe Radhe, I see two two again. I see my younger version there. I don't know. Yeah. Jitinji, Radhe Radhe. I can unmute you also. So strange. Okay, Rahul Bhai, Radhe Radhe. Four hands and then we can. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Maluhi Pratishtaham Amritasya Vesya Cha Shashvakasya Cha Dharmasya 
So, Kesya Kanti Kasya Cha. Radhe Radhe. Thank you, Rahul. Okay, last three hands. Priya Ji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Yeah. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, Riyaji. Brahma Nohi Pratishtaham Amritasya Vavasya Cha Shashvatasya Cha Dharmasya Sukasya Kanti Kasya Cha Nice, Riyaji. Thank you. Last but not least, Udeji. Udeji. Radhe Radhe. Yeah. Radhe Radhe. Brahmano hi pratishtaham Amritasya abhya yasya cha Shashvatasya cha dharmasya Sukasya Sukasya Antikasya cha Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe. So in this shloka, uh, again, just to tee it up for participants who may be new, we are not on 14th chapter, so we are going through the sequence and we are currently on 4th chapter, but like we often do, when we pick up a topic, we go back and forth uh, to cover the topic that we are discussing. And right now, the topic of discussion is uh, understanding the different uh, facets or aspects related to God. Who is God? Uh, what is our relationship with God? And then the polytheism. And for the next couple of days, we are going to talk about is God? does God have a form or is formless? So as part of that discussion, I picked up the shloka. So in this shloka, in 14th chapter, 27th verse, Lord Krishna is saying, I am the basis of the formless Brahman, the immortal and imperishable of eternal dharma and of unending divine bliss. Now this topic is particularly intriguing because it's a topic which is hotly debated amongst um, Jnana yogis and Bhakti yogis. Okay, people say God is formless and then say, you know, God has a form. So we'll try to tackle it very systematically and using the, um, you know, irrefutable logic that Swamiji and Maharaji present. So that is what we are going to use as a basis for our discussion. So let's get started on this very fascinating topic. Hopefully it's going to shed light on this topic. It's going to take a few sittings, but we will go slow and very systematically on this. Okay. So let me get started. How many of you feel God is formless only? You can raise your hand. God is Nirakar. Anybody? I mean, you can raise your hand. We can maybe could have taken a quick poll around it. All right. Shilpa from Los Angeles feels that way. Vijay ji, Shalini ji, Komal ji. All right. Now well, that's good to know. Wonderful. Now, you can raise your, lower your hands and I'll take Sushi Raji. So we have quite a few people who actually feel that way, participants who feel it that way. Now you can lower your hands. Now, how many of you feel, now forget about that. Let me ask a question now. Okay, follow-up question to that. Now, how many of you th think that we can limit a God not to have form if he so chooses to? So those of you who feel it is formless, you think, it's a kind of a limitation we are imposing on God. Let's say he chooses to take on a form. Can we prevent that? Or he does not have the ability to do that. And let me add another question to it. If we say God can only be formless, only, are we saying, are we refuting the definition of God that he's not all powerful, where he doesn't have the ability? If we have a form, we can take on a form. God doesn't have that ability and he can only remain formless. Anybody who thinks we, we can impose that restriction on God or, but anyways, you don't have to answer that question right now. Maybe we'll take it up as part of our discussion as we're going to have. Now, how many of you think that God is form only, has form only? Now, there are Dwaitis as well who think God has form only. Okay, Falguni ji thinks that way. Anybody else? We have less number of hands here, more in the Nirakar part of it. Anybody else who thinks it that way? Okay. Uh, Shamji thinks God has a form only. All right. Anybody else? Okay. So a few people, there are like both the end of the spectrums we have where um, some people God only has a form and then some have a think that God does not have a form at all. Right. Now, what our scriptures tell us is, 
god is see when we re- we say only when we replace only with not only that is the all encompassing definition of god okay not only formless but also has a form okay this is the complete comprehensive all inclusive definition of god okay if we say god cannot have a form that means god is not all powerful and if we think god is all powerful we go by the definition of god being all powerful then we cannot restrict him to have a form and we will get very deep into this topic um looking at the different manifestations of god so the right understanding around this is god is not only formless nirakar but also sagar god is not only nirgun nirvishesh nirakar but saguna sakar as well okay and we will very systematically tackle that so that it it is uh, convincing intellectually as well not just because we are saying it right now so we will go through it step by step so our scripture tell us let's say for now take it on a face value even though you might not be completely convinced but let's continue on this discussion first of all the reason for that to begin with what i'm saying is if we believe in the definition that god is all powerful that means he has an ability to take on a form when he chooses to and if we saying no god can only be formless that means we are not agreeing to the definition of god being all powerful okay so just hold on to that thought and now let's move on okay now this is what our scriptures say god manifests in three ways okay you see three ways we will talk about these three ways what are the first one the first one is called brahman which is formless all pervading manifestation of god the nirakar aspect of god okay which is brahman it is called brahman the second one is paramatma the supreme soul seated in the heart of all living beings distinct from the individual soul the key point here is the supreme soul which is the super soul and it is distinct from the individual soul we will touch upon all of these three in great detail but for now i'm just bringing in the cat the different types or the manifestation of god and the third one is called bhagwan which is the personal manifestation of god that descends upon the earth from time to time okay so this is what our scriptures say god has three manifestations the all pervading brahman the the one which is localized existence of god which is seated within as paramatma and the third one is called bhagwan where he takes on a form now he he takes on a form like us but he is not made up of panch mahabhut okay i'll get into that as well he takes on a form like you know avatars happen now the real wisdom is to hold this contradictions simultaneously in our intellect god is simultaneously everywhere in our heart and takes on an avatar you cannot say if he is all pervading then how can he be situated inside or if he is situated inside how can he take an avatar or if he takes an avatar that means he is not all pervading or not seated inside all three can happen simultaneously okay this is the definition of god scripturally speaking all right so let's move on to okay again i'll make a quick thing just so that you're not losing it too much we have covered so formless and form we said not only but also is the right understanding of god you cannot say god is formless or you cannot simply say god has a form it is both it is not only formless but also has a form both in fact i will tell you the everything in our scriptures has a personal form ganga yamuna vedic rijhas pretty much everything has a personal form okay this is how it goes so there is an impersonal form and then there is a personal form of everything like you see in our in our serials ganga mata has come now you may say it's mythology it's not mythology they all have a personal form each vedas vedic rijhas have a personal form as well and lot of those vedic rijhas they manifested as gopis during krishna avatar Okay, this is this is how it it works out uh, basically as scripture say now we spoke about the, what are the three manifestations of god these are the three manifestations of god the brahman which is all pervading formless aspect parmatma which is resided within us which is the basis of our life 
which locks down our karmas as well, by the way. And third is Bhagwan when he takes on a Sagun Sakar Swarup as a, in his personal form. And God is simultaneously, he can exist simultaneously. We cannot say if you have taken an avatar, so you know, how is it possible? We are limited. God is not limited in that sense. He can do everything parallelly. And we will get into some of the stories and stuff like that to illustrate that point. But this is for now, these are the three manifestations of God. Now let me pose a question to participants to drive this discussion forward. Oops, sorry about that. I have to admit few people as well. Now, are these same or different? I'm going to ask that. Water, vapor, and ice. Are these same or different? Anybody who wants to take this question? Sam, so, Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Yeah, they are same, but uh, properties wise, they are different. The same and different, yeah. True. Yes, Monica ji, you wanted to add something? Monica ji, Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, 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 everybody. Uh, so, they are same, but uh, their form is different. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the problem, basically, it's all H2O. It's all H2O, but at the same time, there's a bit of a difference, yes, right? Aparna ji, you wanted to add something? And Hasmita, let's take a couple of hands quickly, and then I'll move this discussion forward. Radhe, Radhe. No, I was going to say the same. They, it is, they are all the same, but uh, in different forms. Fair enough. Okay, thank yes, Asmita. Asmita. Uh, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Um, they're all the same, uh, but they have they're like they have different forms and. Yes, very true. I'll take one more hand. Um, yes, Shilpaji, and then we can continue. And maybe we can take. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think we've established that chemically they might be the same. Um, in the previous slide, when you had the form only and formless, I was actually thinking of not this example, but I was thinking of wind and water or air and water. Um, water is something that takes the shape of whatever vessel it's in, um, kind of like God because I think God is in various shapes in front of okay. us. And he said that in Gita. Vapor or air is shapeless. We can only see the effects of it. And ice is a form, an actual hard form that's already been given. It is uh, it is a very, sh it, it doesn't go into the vessel. It's already come out of the vessel with its right. hard shape. So those are the yeah. three different. So the key point here was, I can come back. Let's, uh, the key point here is, they are all H2O, but at the same time, there's a different manifestations of the same water, right? If you are feeling thirsty and somebody gives you ice, will it quench your thirst? No, it's not, right? It will not. So point here is that under certain conditions, they although they are chemically same, but there are different manifestations and each does its own work. So that is one example analogy. Want. Yes, Keshav, you wanted to add something? Radhe, 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 Radhe. Uh, I will go a little uh, back. Bhagwan ne Bhumi banane ke liye pehle gagan banaya fir vayu aag or neer. Jab vayu mein aag had hoti hai to steam bhaap ban jata hai. Jab usme se heat totally taken out then wo barf ban jata hai. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe, very nice. True. So even though chemically they are very nice, yeah, Keshav ji, they are all the same. Right? But at the same time, the manifestations are different. Right? Similarly, let's talk about it. Now, like another analogy I want to give you is, which is sun out of the following? Okay, I'll give you, show you a beautiful sun. Okay, now, which is sun out of the following? Would you call the rays of this as a sun? This as a sun? Or this as a sun? Which one is the sun? Everybody. See, when you say, when you wake up in the morning, you turn your blinds off and you say the sun has come. Now, if the sun would truly come, you know, we know what would, what would happen. The rays of the sun has come. So, which one of these is the sun actually? It's quite tricky, yeah? isn't it? Radhe, Radhe. <laughs> Depends Radhe, on Radhe. How, you, how you're looking at it. Not too tricky. 
anybody which is sun yeah. out of you Okay, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's all everything is sun only. The different parts being manifested, different, different parts, right? The manifesting manifestations, right? Monica, you wanted to add something? The the same thing, Nitinji. Uh, all of it. You yeah, agree to agree, right? You don't agree to disagree or disagree to agree, right? Okay, good. The first one. <laughs> okay. Yes, Tanmayji, you wanted to add something? Uh, Tanmayji, it's a very subjective question. Yes, Radhe Radhe. Yes, Radhe Radhe. Am I audible? Am I audible? You're super, supremely audible. Yes. So it's just like uh, two examples: like cow or upon human. Our inner के सारे organs तो हम feel करते हैं, पर अंदर के जो microorganisms हैं वो हमको feel नहीं करते. So it's just like a cow के चार पेट हैं और वो feel कर पाती है, because उसका consciousness है. एक. अब okay. हम बोल सकते हैं कि एक भी है और अलग भी है, because अगर कोई surface पे रह रहा होगा, वो two dimensional होगा, तो वो नहीं बोल सकता. Fair point. So yeah, basically what you are saying is qualitatively the experience would vary, right? And it's a very valid point. So yes, Keshav ji, you wanted to add something before I move forward. So I'm trying to drive yeah. the point here, okay? Which yeah, Radhe Radhe. Yeah. Radhe, Radhe. In Lord Krishna said in chapter fifteen, "Jo sun me light hai, the rays is me." So light, the rays is God Himself, and the surface of the sun. Is the prakriti and soul of the sun? It is the. It has come from God. Okay. Like, uh, <clears throat> like uh, in me, God is there. In everything, is God is there. So likewise, God is there in the sun. The core is God. Okay. Yes, you. Yeah, I think you you went a little too deep into that. But the point I was very true, uh, Keshavji. Thank you for your input on that. The point I'm trying to make here is all three are sun. Right? It is you can't differentiate sun. Pour from sun's surface, from sun's rays. They are all combined, called sun. So sun rays come, the sun has come. We say that. Having said that, there is still a difference between the manifestations, right? Rays are qualitatively different from the surface, and the core is different, right? Although all of it is a sun. Similarly, when we talk about Brahman, Paramatma, and God, they are all the same. Right? They they are basically nobody is less or more. However, qualitatively, it is different. Which is what we are going to talk about in our sessions, so that we understand what is the nirakar swarup of God, and uh, what are the qualities they get manifested in a nirakar swarup of God. What is the paramatma swarup of God, and what are the qualities that get manifested in that? And then what is the bhagwan swarup of God, and what are the qualities that get manifested in that? Okay, although all of it is God, so it is like some qualities are latent. and some are exhibited in each one of these forms and depending upon what we choose as an object of our worship you know it varies as well the results that you get in return and that is what we are going to focus on uh, in our discussion upcoming discussions now let's move on um, i love the graphs around it so i'm going to put a graph here so two dimensions here one is talking about proximity to god and one is the realization of god now if you were to understand the sun if you if you limit yourself to the rays would you understand the sun completely you get closer you get to the surface you understand it a little better and you get to the core you'll understand it completely in its entirety right same thing happens in the three swaroops of god as well when you are worshiping nirakar when you get into the parmatma aspect of god and when you get to the bhagwan aspect of god this is what will be the basis of our discussion for the next two or three sessions now this is how it goes the proximity to god and realization of god okay if this is the graph it starts with brahman okay brahman then it goes on to paramatma and in bhago bhagwan if you look at it it is the complete realization of god and why we will talk about it don't take it on the word value right now or the face value we will get technical into it very clearly into why now brahman is the formless light Paramatma is the supreme soul which is seated within, and Bhagwan is the avatar with the form. These are the three aspects of God. All are same. With that said, now let me pose another question here. Now, in this picture, what are you seeing? Are you? What are you seeing in this picture? Let me. Oops. 
Anybody who wants to take this question? Light. Just light or much more? Okay. Rahul bhai, Radhe Radhe. The train seems to be approaching probably Vande Bharat Express, yeah. Okay, but how does it start? What do you? What are you looking at first of all? Yeah, a light in the beginning. Light in the beginning. Is it just a yes? Is it just a light though? It's not light, right? So from a distance, from far, it appears as a light. But as you get closer to it, you understand there is a yes, Palviji. You wanted to add something. Palviji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, good evening, everyone. So, Nitinji, that's what I was uh, going to say. That from far, it looks like that uh, a huge light. But when it approaches and it starts coming closer, then we see that, no, it was not only light. It, has the, it is the train which was approaching. So, we start. And then once it, then later, yeah, you can say more about the personal. So, yeah. from far off, to begin with, it will seem like a light. But when you get closer to it, it would appear in its full glory. You know, it's a full-blown train with compartments and so many things. So same thing happens when we... Now we are going to get into the detail of this shloka in much more detail tomorrow, the Brahman aspect of it. So the light is just an effulgence of God. In fact, it is said, God in his personal form is the, the effulgence from his body or probably the light coming from his toenail in this particular shloka, that itself is called the nirakar aspect, the effulgence. But when you get closer to him, he's a full blown in his glory. You can see that. So the Brahman aspect is his impersonal form, the all pervading and the effulgence emanating from his body. However, there is a full blown personality behind it as well. That is what our scriptures are saying. It's a mind blowing concept, of course. Now let's talk a little bit about Brahman before we open it up for some questions because a lot to digest, I can see that. What is Brahman? Okay, we'll talk about the formless aspect of it. What when Bhakti Shadak Haji has explained that Sarva Shakti Sampanna Ho Shakti Vikas Na Hoe Radhe Radhe Satchit Anand Roop Jo Brahma Kahave Soe. So the form of God in which all the divine powers are present. Of course, all the powers are present. Okay, but they are latent. They are totally dormant, which is merely a divine existence is called Satchit Anand Brahm. Sat is active. Chit and Anand are dormant. This is the Brahman formless or Nirakar aspect of God. Okay, that is how it has been explained. Now you would say, what difference does it make? It does. When we get into the other aspects of God, it will make more sense as to what difference does it make. So Brahman is that effulgence or the nirakar or the formless, all-pervading aspect of God where his powers, although he has all of them, but they are latent. Only the sat aspect is there, chit and ananda, dormant. Dormant means the potential is there, but they are not manifested. It's like a matchstick. Only when we rub it, the fire comes out or the seed of a banyan tree. Although it is small, but it has a full potential of a banyan tree there. It comes out. That is what Brahman is. The formless aspect of God with pretty much the Satchid Anand aspect is there. But only Sat is manifested. Chit and Anand are dormant. Okay. This is the Brahman aspect of God. Now, getting back to the same part, I want you to spend a little bit of time in the three part. And now what we are going to spend time is Brahman. We will talk in more details tomorrow. Then we will pick up the Paramatma aspect of God and the Bhagwan aspect of God. So we'll take three settings to complete one for each and go really deep into each one of these aspects as from a devotee standpoint, um, when we worship a certain form, what does it mean? And, uh, and then basically what it means for our devotion, um, going with each one of form, because each one of it is a God, right? It's like worshipping God in three different ways. Now, people who worship Nirakar Brahman, they say that they're going to merge into Jyoti. Yeah? It's a Jyoti Punj only. You'll, they'll merge into that. That is one goal. People who worship the Paramatma aspect of God, they say we are going to have a union with Paramatma, Samadhi, Nirvikalp Samadhi, like in Ashtang Yoga they do. And people who worship Bhagwan, they say we are going to go to his abode, personal abode, 
and and do the seva and have that satchidanand you know as basically the divine love of god um, and and render service to god so the goal varies even though you are worshiping god in all three and each will help you realize god but the goal is different and now you'll say if i'm realizing god how what difference does it make the difference that is it makes is in the rasas it's like you have jaggery then you have brown sugar brown sugar not the cocaine or anything the brown sugar you know right raw sugar and then you have uh, molasses or mishri the sweetness keeps on varying because the closer you get to the sun only when you get to the core of the sun you will be able to realize it in its full potential or be able to gain when you know what it the maximum that it can offer but the further you are from it you will not be able to realize that okay so that is how it goes and that's why this graph that i had created that puts things in perspective which we will keep revisiting as we build on this discussion around the three aspects of or the three manifestations of god the proximity and the realization keeps on increasing as you get closer to the god and that realization is complete in the saguna sakar form is what we are going to talk about for with scriptural references and seeing um, uh, what our scriptures have to say about each one of these um, starting with the discussion that we are having today any questions so far on this topic it's a pretty intriguing discussion that we are going to talk about so any questions so far it is how does how does it matter to me whether i whether i worship god in any of forms it's same for me isn't it uh, god is ultimately is, he he what he is true doesn't matter actually but your end result end result vary in the sense that if you if you do not go with the sagun sakar you will be vanchit from his selfless the seva that you do or the divine love aspect of it now when you worship it in a nirakar aspect the moksha is the final result because you merge with the fulgens and the question i posed if you remember if you like to eat rasgulla a lot of people raise their hand when you like to eat rasgulla would you like to eat rasgulla taste rasgulla or become rasgulla yourself so when you worship god in nirakar form your goal is to merge with the fulgens or the nirakar aspect of it your identity ceases to you have become the rasgulla yourself okay but when you worship god in the sagun sakar swarup then you get to taste his divine bliss okay you still maintain your identity and the dwait aspect remains and you are able to serve him even after liberation so liberation is already taken care of you go even beyond liberation which is called premanand in case of nirgun nirakar worship you get up to brahmanand which is moksha if you go to sagun sakar you got much higher which is called premanand and the way scriptures explain difference between premanand and brahmanand is you take a tip of a needle and put water on it okay you know the tip of the needle cannot hold water but whatever is remaining if you taste that much of premanand you will give up an entire ocean of brahmanand that is the difference between premanand and brahmanand so it does matter you know depending upon if you aspire for something higher but if you aspire for moksha see divine bliss you remember we spoke about the premanand for the the condition for premanand is that you need to give up two things mukti material desires and mukti even the desire for liberation so mukti and moksha also you have to reject then you get premanand so that is where it makes the difference but if you are happy at the moksha level then not needed but when you are aspiring why not aspire for the highest why settle for something so mujhe yaad hai initially i was wanted moksha fir mujhe the initial talk with you oh. but then over the period of two and a half years i have come to premanand so i'm okay there i don't want moksha na and within premanand also we have seen so many categories yeah, right i know yes right. i do recall that yeah so when you good. go for something why not go for the highest why limit yourself right it makes sense na bhakti and is think so that big that difference it makes good question yeah. thank you for asking that प्रॉक्सिमिटी टू गॉड 
that means the distance between you and god is shrinking and your realization of god is also increasing that's what it means so the complete realization happens when you get completely close to god not from a distance you know as a light or a formless brahman so it's like when you have not seen somebody in an entirety and not having a basis to interact with them then you have not really realized the truth in in its entirety so even moksha is not an entirety knowing god in entirety it's like merging with the effulgence but you have not gotten a chance to enjoy the relish the bliss of god and be having an ability to serve him or become his eternal associate after liberation that opportunity is forfeited that's essentially what it means yes any more questions um, shweta ji wanted to ask something shweta ji radhe radhe is it going to are there shweta ji Uh, yeah. and how did do this oh my God. yes radhe radhe nitin ji radhe radhe everybody i have a question okay. while you were explaining this graph uh, i was just wondering if you are able to correlate karma gyan and bhakti marg to this graph karma gyan and bhakti marg to this graph ha huh? uh -huh. yeah i can map it to that as well so gyan marg see if you talk about gyan marg here right gyan marg will the the goal of gyan marg is to get moksha which is up to the brahman aspect of it right mm -hmm. and if you do karma yog and you are perfecting karma yog you will actually get to you are not depending upon what you consider god if you consider god as a paramatma seated within or you consider god as a light really depends on you know when you are doing it for the pleasure of god what do you how do you conceive god as you know if you worship god as a brahman he is not going to manifest himself in front of you say by the way this is how i look he will krishna in bhagavad gita has said that i will meet you the same way as you worship me he will he will come and he will basically be a formless light in front of you or if you worship god as a paramatma then you will probably get a samadhi in that case and then you will be in the middle of the graph but if you have worshiped god as bhagwan and you have perfected your karm yog like that then you are eligible for premanand so it really depends on how you worship god you know uh, those sanskars would determine the course of your uh, the trajectory of your realization at that point okay so the, those who are seeking uh, <clears throat> gyan mark they will focus on just the brahman those who are doing uh, rituals and everything like worshiping vishnu shankar whatever they are they will fall in this category parmatma and those who only seek his love affection that will be you will be worshiping bhagwan is that right true there is a technical difference what you said those who will be doing karm kand karm kand does not take us to god realization karm kand takes us to celestial abodes okay purely rituals will only take us to celestial abodes because karm kand without bhakti is not complete so you need bhakti regardless now i'll throw in a curve ball here another one okay which is a very interesting concept even for you to get moksha you have to worship sagun sakar i'll tell you why we'll di discuss this when we discuss the topic of brahman in brahman the the nirgun nir, nir, nirvishesh nirakar god his chit and anand shakti is not manifested that means he cannot grace you so the grace is cut and for you to realize god whether it is in form of moksha also you need god's grace our scriptures tell us that so my question to swami ji was when sagun nirgun nirakar cannot grace how can even a gyani attain moksha and he said in advanced stage of his then his guru will say now you have to do bhakti of sagun sakar and then he attain moksha so even for you to get to the state of moksha finally you have to do bhakti of sagun sakar and then you get grace and then you attain moksha as well so regardless bhakti has to be done now in which form you do depending upon that your realization would be there so even for moksha you have to do sagun sakar bhakti in the advanced stages your guru will say see you have come across this stage now you have been perfectly situated in self realization you have conquered a vidya maya but now if beyond this point in order to cut the shackles of maya you have to surrender to maya dhish sagun sakar so that he can grace you and then you can cut it so this is how it goes and parmatma so then then 
then uh, love is required regardless whether you're worshiping brahman uh, paramatma or bhagwan if you want to attain salvation but they, yeah. this is not like cut and dry you know uh, like we can say brahman is uh, gyan marg or paramatma is karma kanda or bhagwan is you know bhakti marg so there is no correlation sharanagati surrender is required regardless okay if, even if you look at the gyan marg they talk about sharanagat to ishwara ishwara okay? they refer to god as ishwara sharanagati is required regardless whichever path you take sharanagati mm -hmm. and and love for devotion god. yeah and devotion is required yes and oh, bhakti, thank you so much appreciate so bhakti the way bhakti is described in our scriptures is there are three conditions there are five or six but three are important one is without which you cannot attain god no with what is needed to attain god which is an absolute must second is without which you cannot attain god and third is it does not need a support of anything else so all three criteria bhakti fills right in gyan you cannot complete your process of moksha even without bhakti in karma also you cannot complete the process of god realization without bhakti and bhakti is self sufficient in itself so bhakti is the secret sauce or the key ingredient regardless of which path you pick up so that is a common denominator for all common of the denominator those. very true oh. common denominator it is like amrit amrit whether you mix it with milk it becomes amrit you mix it with water it becomes amrit you mix it with coke it becomes amrit so amrit is bhakti that has to be imbibed regardless of which path you pick up that is the key thing wonderful thank you so much for explaining it radhe radhe no worries radhe radhe yes uh, sandhya we have a, again a chat uh, can you help us understand brahman more formless light what is the soul in relation, relation to it priya ji is asking this question uh, what is the what is the soul in relation, relation to it soul okay. in in context to brahman okay now brahma jeev maya we are getting into right so god we are soul is a fragmental part of god so god has three powers see this is a manifestation let's not mix manifestations with the powers of god these are the three manifestations of god which we spoken about where one manifestation is the formless all pervading second is the localized the parmatma which resides in our soul which is called the super soul which you know logs our karmas and third is bhagwan when he manifests in sagun sakar swarup what we are is a shakti of god this is a manifestation of god shakti of god what which shakti the god has three powers one is called atarangi power his yogamaya power second is called his external energy inferior energy which is maya and third is called his tatastha power which is what we are okay so we are his borderline or the tatastha power jeeva shakti so we are fragmental parts of god so if you look at it in we are a fragmental part of god and god is all three manifestations brahman uh, paramatma and god uh, bhagwan swarup himself so we are his fragmental energy now you can call yourself as a fragmental energy of brahman or you can call your fragmental energy of paramatma or bhagwan in both all the three cases you are right i hope i answered your question priya ji are you clear now i i guess yes okay we'll take pick up this topic again brahma jeev and maya that will help you shed more light but let's for now understand the three different manifestations of god we will get into more details around brahman tomorrow and then parmatma day after and then bhagwan as well okay and that's where we will tackle all the three aspects of god and why there are you know three aspects and what is uh, what does it mean for a devotee when you worship each you know and what is the what is it yet you can expect uh, when you are on that path yes sandhya you want to ask something sandhya radhe 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 yes uh, radhe radhe so uh, one thing like a quick mention as you said that the common denominator is like yog that has to be there in all the three so that basically kind of makes yeah sense and second thing was this like appears apparently contradictory at least technically that uh, like when something merges with another thing isn't that the closest distance wise it is basically called it merges with that basically you see it's like this again it's a loose analogy that is given is a madhumakhi or a honey bee 
would it enjoy honey tasting the honey by maintaining its identity or becoming the honey itself but it's not an ordinary honey of course but this is the loose analogy you can understand so in dwai see duality is the cause of bondage in material world but after liberation duality gives you the highest bliss by maintaining your separate identity but when you merge with the god it is also called spiritual suicide because now you cannot serve god okay Sorry, so if yeah. you look at some of the danavs or the uh, demons when god kills them they don't get an opportunity to it is actually a, it is called a spiritual punishment in a way i mean punishment would be a harsh word because they have gotten liberation they are beyond maya but they get they merge into god at that point they don't get the opportunity to serve him in divine abodes so dwait is becomes an asset for you after liberation before liberation dwait is the cause of bondage but after liberation dwait maintaining your identity helps you relish that bliss and which is far more superior bliss, bliss than merging into the fulgence is how it is explained yeah yeah so that's what i want to get at so one way by which we can distinguish the experience of these three forms of god is like in terms of sweetness and the bliss that you mentioned right sweetness that what kind of yeah the sweetness increases basically even within preman and there are so many levels we have spoken about right you start with you know the brajras and so it like bitter better there's no limit in in see god cannot say this is the best bliss i can give you and done deal it just keeps on being fresh and ever increasing and he is not short of funds where he say now this is the best i could have offered you and i'm done now it just keeps on again so the taste becomes finer and finer and finer and finer that is how it goes basically yes uh, three more hands i see it's a pretty interesting topic i know intriguing as well but yeah. we'll pick up one aspect in one session and go really deep into it uh, you know starting tomorrow yes ji prabhat ji says puran brahma parmatma tum sabke swami right very uh, true yeah. i'll take priya ji once all three priya. have basically replete all of three are god however the manifestation is different like i spoke about water vapor and you know the manifestation is different although all three are god and all three are basically you can realize god in any form taste or the sweetness would differ that's all it is yes now priya ji uh, sorry priya ji are Yes. Uh yes, hi Nitin ji, thank you so much for answering my question. I'm sorry uh, I couldn't unmute myself in time, but uh, I really appreciate uh, you know the learnings I'm taking from this class. So yeah. I just wanted to say thank you and Are next time Priyaji? I'll Priyaji from <laughs> Singapore. <laughs> no, I'm Priyaji from Dallas, so I hope to meet you someday. <laughs> so sure. Uh meet yeah. You. uh but next time i'll i'll definitely have my video on so uh thank you so much oh my pleasure thank you so much thank you for asking the question for everybody's benefit i would say all thank right you. yeah rahul bhai radhe 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 i think swami ji and maharaj ji also gave an example of king janak who was vidhe and then a worshipper of nirakar brahm as soon as he saw shri ram all that evaporated and he was just very diving to that premananda that ocean. there are multiple examples in each yuga in treta we have king janak then in uh, i think uh, satyug we had the the four kumars you yes. know their nostrils got vishnu tulsi they got intoxicated even though they were brahmanandi and then in uh, dwapar it was uddhav uddhav yeah. so that is the that is the level of premanand when a brahmanandi comes in contact with premanand they are like and there are examples in all the three yugas around it good call out thank you for sharing that vijay ji radhe 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 vijay ji uh, radhe radhe nitin ji <laughs> so very interesting topic and i have i have lot of questions but i'll just restrict myself to a single question today we'll have so a lot of sessions a lot of discussion around <laughs> so please keep your questions ready it's yeah, important we, we get them uh, you know have a good discussion around each one of those yeah so uh, i would you know i would say that all three are equal states as you already mentioned whether it's Bra- uh, brahman or parmanatma or parmanand my basic you know this question i always have that why who makes this distinction between brahman and parmanand that is my question which you may not need to answer today mm-hmm. today my question is like okay once you reach those stages 
so out of the soul who actually enjoys that because uh, the body is here the subtle bo- uh, the subtle body and causal body so which actually what actually enjoys that uh, parmanand no that's a good question so when you're talking about premanand you're saying right correct so this is how it works when you get premanand you maintain your identity then you don't get you get an upgrade it's no longer a panch mahabhut sharir at that point okay you get a divine upgrade and that's that's where and you maintain your chit and that is how you experience that so you get an up, you get faculty and an upgrade to experience that that is how it goes you you are no longer under material bondage liberation is already taken care of and you have gotten an upgrade in your mind body senses and everything and that is how you get to enjoy that secondly who decides that right saints decide that people who have realized it or avataris maybe we can talk about that as well they come and explain you right and then the scriptures are written explaining that in great detail there are different avataris that come from time to time who explain that now it's a leap of faith of course until we reach there uh, but then they have gone on to the length of explaining it in great detail um, uh, it's all basically a faith driven thing until that point because until we have experienced it we can't say that right but if somebody has written an entire literature on it going to the nitty gritties of it and uh, there's a good reason for us to believe that that is how it's meant to be so i think that's a fair explanation i think i should i'll stick with that but do we have any reference from uh, say kripaluji maharaj or his it is some written text about this or some of his videos yeah. this this is what we are going to discuss you now when i introduced this thing you know which we are going to talk about starting tomorrow this is from his bhakti shatak only ओके सो ब्राह्मण सर्व शक्ति संपन्न हो शक्ति विकास न होए राधे राधे सचेत आनंद रूप जो ब्रह्म कहावे सोए इट इज फ्रॉम इज भक्ति शतक ओनली एंड विल गेट इनटू दिस डिटेल एंड द अदर टू आल्सो आर फ्रॉम इज भक्ति शतक ओनली एंड इफ यू गो टू चैतन्य चरितामृत और गौरांग महाप्रभु यू विल गेट टंस ऑफ इट एट देयर एज़ वेल सो इट्स ऑल कमिंग फ्रॉम स्क्रिप्चर्स इट्स नॉट समथिंग आई एम फैब्रिकेटिंग और सेइंग इट ऑन माय ओन बिकॉज़ आई एम नॉट इवन एंटाइटल्ड टू टॉक अबाउट दिस टॉपिक आई एम जस्ट टेलिंग यू व्हाट या I think that's perfectly fine. So you know, as I've heard that it takes lifetimes and lifetimes of you know to uh, jarmas to actually get to that state, even to the Brahman and uh, to Brahman, right? So I would say you know let let me continue in whatever path. All three are equal for me uh, in this lifetime. At least you know I'm not achieving sure. permanent. Sure. So let me continue my journey on one of these paths, and maybe sometime I'll reach permanent. <laughs> so thank you so much. Sure. Hey, one more thing, Vijay ji. Yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> I wanted to clarify: it's not a sequential path. Okay. so the sanskar to build bottom up will go a long way in, in determining which path attracts you and you continue on that so it's not a sequential first you go there then you go there and then you go there it doesn't work like that yesterday i was saying right um that uh, people when they go to learn music the teacher asks the first question do you know music if they say yes they say then we will charge you double the fee because they have to first understand then so the sanskar that we build we will persist with that and then it works so yeah but i would say whatever well we have started digging let's continue on that it makes it easy of course and even any of this path i am very sure that we need everything is needed karma yoga is needed gyan yoga is needed bhakti yoga everything is needed on any of these paths we cannot right. neglect if we neglect any one we cannot nobody is yeah nobody is neglect that's very true we need gyan because jane binu hoye na parti thi binu parti thi na hoye priti so you need knowledge to build faith to build love of course and then when you need to do karam not even for a second we can be without karam and of course bhakti has to be the way of life so all three are important very true yeah thank you so much jitendra ji radhe 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 thank, thank you so much. much all right a uh, couple of hands i think we have a hard stop at uh, 10 so we can take two more hands uh, shilpa ji monika ji and maybe quickly family camp mm-hmm. please register yeah. for it if you have not okay it's a sos call to all of you do register for it and just show up we are going to have a lot of fun and swami ji is amazing just don't lose out on this opportunity i just want to call that out okay that is one announcement from my side and probably the only one okay then they can take the couple of questions now okay yes, radhe radhe everybody yes anithi ji i just wanted to share one of my experiences so uh, looking at everything with skepticism uh, sadguru was able to answer a lot of things so i i did any engineering and then i started doing shamabhi kriya for 3 years that was like i think brahmana the approach uh <clears throat> something in me told me that there's something still left i i felt at peace it changed my life for sure but then when i 
when I uh, got into Krishna Bhakti, I, I think my spiritual, spiritual journey has been fastened. And it, it's changed because it, it's like taken off. Really, I mean, I, I saw Sandhya's, uh, you know, hand action. It, it's taken off. And then it, it's a different experience altogether. I mean, earlier I was calm. Now I'm calm and happier and, and joyful. And uh, it, it's like, you know, Krishna is everywhere. So I don't know. I just wanted to uh, share that. Uh, that I crossed over from Brahman and uh, seeking Brahmanandi to Premanandi. So, true. So, this is a very good realization. In fact, the path of devotion is very blissful. Gopis used to say, What do we do with a God whom we can't see, whom we can't even interact with, you know, who we can't even converse with? What do we do with such kind of a God? Right. And that is why, under the sway of love, God descends and takes on a form to reveal his nature and tell how you. He, you know, you can build a personal connect with him and how he can actually be enslaved with us. And Krishna Bhakti is very durlab. Durlab means, trust me, you cannot get Krishna Bhakti just like that. And if those sanskars have sprouted for whatever reason, you might have done it in the past or some kripa has happened. It is very durlab. It's like you are building a connect with the Brahmand Nayak, who's the creator of this entire thing, right? It's his play basically and you're building a correct. So it's very rare. And if it is happening and coming naturally to you, it's a huge privilege. Make the most of it. And of course, it, this path is blissful because we are not negating anything. Like in Gyan Marg, Neti Neti, right? Not mind this. You are actually dovetailing anything which becomes even more beautiful. You can dance. You can cook. You can sing. Do anything that you want. You know, be your natural self. Just dovetail it towards God. That's all. You don't have to become serious. You don't have to become austere. You know, you don't right. have to be sitting in samadhi and not interacting with anybody. In other parts, a lot of these kind of things are there, right? In Bhakti Park, of course not. Raganuga Bhakti is all love for God. Dovetail it and do whatever you want to do. But it has to be in a proper consciousness for the pleasure of God. And that's all it is. So it is a beautiful path in that way. And most important thing with devotion, you are tapping into a reservoir of grace, which is the secret sauce on this path. In other parts, you are devoid of grace because you are relying on your self-effort. That is limiting. So when you are tapping right. on grace, of course, it will it will do wonders at that point, right? So great realization. Thank you for sharing. Right, that. and 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 also Ritinji, um, off late, uh, uh, I was listening to Sadhguru on one of his series, and then he was he also talks about Krishna, and then he says that I encourage everybody to be skeptical of everything, but when you think about Krishna, I just need a mad heart. And the way he explains, it's it's phenomenal. So so now I know that when he when he wants to talk to people, he has like a lot of people, like how Swamiji has every every kind of audience, right? So we cannot explain details uh, of everything. But then uh, I, I think they all are doing a very good job of at least making some sense out of uh, people who don't understand spirituality at all. So yes, Sadirat. Thank you for sharing that. And Krishna. When you start taking your mind space, you will struggle to get him out because he's the Ras Sindhu, right? He's Rasik Shiromani and Ras, but he doesn't just capture your mind space just for the sake of it, right? Once we reach that, then it is said it is so intoxicating that even if you want, he will not get out of it. So it's a beautiful position to be, but I'm glad, you know, you're on this path and you're feeling that connect pretty early on. So it's just a good spot to be. All right. Uh, we have just one more minute. So Tanmayji, real quick, 60 seconds. And then we need to hand it over to Sunil Ji, who is patiently waiting for us to wrap up. So please go ahead, Tanmayji, and then we'll wrap it up at 10 sharp. One thought, when I have Krishna in my mind, why would I want him to be out of the mind? No. You don't have want to, unless you're a gopi and you want to do some work for a change, you don't want to. I'm, I'm just telling you, we can talk about it a little more. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, I know it's 10 o'clock. So Tanmayji, you wanted to share something real quick? We have 60 seconds. Uh, wrap up karna, 60 seconds mein kab se wait kar raha tha. Main apne point, like, I just want you to understand this point. Main samajh raho, as a one single dimension mein. consciousness ko apan samajhte jab hum dekh rahe ki sirf ye teen characters ki hodi hai brahman aur paramatma and then this entire manifestation aap samjhe ki matab kyon sirf humans humari soul jo sab kuch perceive kar sakti hai और परमात्मा जो पूरा सुपर परसीव कर सकता है और ब्रह्मांड जिसमें हम सिर्फ लिमिटेड चीज में परसीव कर सकते हैं सिर्फ तीन चीज की होती बस मैं ये बोलूंगा बाकी मैं कल बताऊंगा ठीक है आप फीडबैक ट्रैकर प्लीज फिल आउट द फीडबैक ट्रैकर इफ यू हैव एनी अदर क्वेश्चन सो दैट आई कैन ब्रिंग इट बैक टू द सेशन बट थैंक यू एवरीबॉडी एंड विल कंटिन्यू ऑन दिस डिस्कशन टुमारो सो राधे राधे फ्रॉम माय साइड ओवर टू यू सुनील भाई एंड थैंक यू